I have a number of roles, uh, as I have for, for many years in the private sector and, and, in the, and in the public sector. I'm the chairman of a U.S. listed company, a chairman of a Swedish listed company. I also happen to be on the board of the Wellcome Trust and chairman of, of the Royal Botanic Gardens Q. Um, and in those various roles, um, I have watched the unfolding of the COVID crisis uh, with uh, alarm and some deep-seated curiosity. Uh, you know, we, we, we tend to like to look at things in buckets and in nicely defined packages. The problem with the COVID crisis is it isn't something that's just sort of on its own. It just appeared magically or black magically out of nowhere. And if you think about it, I think there's a huge link here between the crisis we're now in and the bigger crisis we've been in for some time. I heard someone the other day say about uh, COVID-19 and the environment and climate change that it's the same story, different timelines. And uh, you know, COVID-19 is another, and it will be coming a very long line of uh, health crises, public health crises, um, global in, 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 in fact, uh, if you could start with H1N1, um, SARS, MERS, Ebola, and now we have COVID-19. Um, and if you think about it, the link to my mind is that we have um, for many years been destroying the habitat of a number of different, uh, in a number of different places. And this means that, for instance, animals and people are now closer together uh, and germs and bacteria and disease is being um, transmitted, particularly from animals to humans. Um, this is not about people eating bats. It is, to my mind, um, a much more fundamental issue about what we are doing to the environment, um, about climate change, and as I said, about the, the loss of habitat. Uh, which means, sadly, that I don't think this is a one-off. I've just given you a list of five things that have already happened and have been affected by many of the same things. Uh, my concern is that we will have another COVID-19, it will be called something else. Um, and are we prepared for it? And do we recognize that this will go on and on until we deal with that bigger issue that has been around us and surrounded us and surrounds uh, this chapter of COVID uh, for many years? Uh, and until we address the climate change issue, um, then I fear that we will see this movie, which we didn't like the first time, or the second, or the third, or the fourth, again, and again, and again. And when you combine that with the other crisis, which is the economic crisis, which is another chapter, if you think about it, if COVID's one chapter in the climate change example, then um, the economic crisis, we have not seen economic weakness um, uh, like this for generations. Uh, and it is getting worse um, by the day. You know, 20% of the United States uh, families can't feed their children now. We are seeing um, unemployment at levels we haven't seen in many places since the Great Depression. And in a fast, in fast moving economies where skills have to change, if you have people out of work for this period of time, um, they will not have the skills to have a job when they go back. So this is, um, we're being assaulted, if you think about it, on all sides. Uh, and I come back to uh, the climate um, and climate change. If we're not willing to step up and deal with that issue, then all these other things that are part of it, but cannot be dealt with in isolation, will continue to happen. And it's natural to try and pick out things and deal with them bit by bit. But we are in deep, deep trouble if we do not understand the interconnected nature of all of this. There's a health crisis, there's a public health crisis, there is an economic crisis, there is now a public trust in government crisis, particularly in the United States, perhaps even here in the UK. Um, people just are beginning to think, i do not not sure that the government um, is dealing with this the way they should. This is a particular issue right now in the United States where it's becoming sadly quite political. Um, so if you think about it, you know, people think about climate change as a question of 
greenhouse gas emissions or renewable energy uh, or saving forests. It's much bigger than that and the implications are far wider than that, um, particularly in light of uh, it's one thing for a company to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions, but if we don't deal with the fundamental loss of climate, of, of habitat, then the issues aren't just that the air is not good to breathe, uh, that it affects us in many ways. It is much more fundamental. Uh, and that is my concern now as we come out of, the, you know, when we ultimately, sorry, come out of the COVID crisis, not just will we have learned and have the playbook, the Obama administration had a 65 or 69 page playbook that they handed over to the next administration. Um, Bill Gates had predicted, and Obama had predicted this in 2015. So we knew this was coming. We knew it was coming not as, a, an, as an esoteric theoretical issue, we knew it from previous experience. So are we going to be prepared for the next one? Because there will be a next one. Will we have the resources? And will we have the willingness to set things aside so that we can deal with it? And then more fundamentally, can we deal with what's at the heart of this so that we can ultimately reduce the likelihood that there will be another example and another devastating uh, disease? And Ebola has been a devastating disease in many parts of the country. It hasn't affected the developed world as, mu as, as much, obviously. We now, thanks to work um, funded by the Wellcome Trust, finally have a disease, it took five, have, have a vaccine, it took them five years. Um, we just can't afford to, to have another one of these, particularly on this, on this level. So, you know, the challenge for all of us, uh, I think, is to think about what can we do as people joined up to, to help people understand the enormity um, and the all-encompassing nature of the interconnected crises that we now are dealing with so that we can get our public and private sector to work together to to deal with all of them so that there is a lasting um a lasting solution uh, that deals with this um and my concern right now i'm not sure we're ready to do that and that i find that deeply distressing